I am free. I cannot be contained. I am hungry. This is Carrion, a Metroidvania that makes you the villain. Specifically, a bloodied, shrieking mass of gnashing teeth and swirling eyeballs. A hive of snapping tentacles that writhes and thrashes like a pile of cartilage and intestines come to life as it slithers its way around an underground facility. Many games cast you as the villain, but Carrion is the first time I've ever felt truly monstrous. You're not a morally misaligned human, or a humanoid who may as well just be a regular human in a costume. The creature in Carrion is truly alien in the literal sense, a being entirely unlike anything within our understanding. This is emphasised wonderfully via the gameplay. Even the simple act of movement solidifies this feeling of otherness. The creature slithers through tight corridors by snapping its tentacles against the walls, building up speed as it crawls its way around, its convulsing heaps leaving behind a trail of goo as it does. Superb animation gives the impression that the creature Creature is an organic being, acting on impulse rather than via conscious thought. Parts of the creature's writhing, elongated torso that's stuck on sharp edges. It swishes itself up against barricades it can't progress through and tumbles under its own weight as it slides out of vents. It appears suitably horrific. But as the player, you are always in complete control. Movement is snappy and responsive, achieved by left clitting and guiding the creature through the level by simply dragging the mouse. Right clit controls a single tentacle, allowing you to pull levers, remove the covers from vents, and most importantly, pull unsuspecting humans into one of your many hungry mouths. Controlling the creature is a joy, and navigating Carrion's labyrinth-like corridors feels appropriately disgusting. Carrion is a metroidvania and contains all of the usual trappings. Disparate sections connected via a hub area, environmental blockades that can be overcome by finding new abilities, bath trapping to find optional upgrades. The facility itself is a fun location to explore. Although the majority of its sections are little more than grimy industrial complexes, they are presented beautifully and help create a sense of claustrophobia that makes working to escape a rewarding endeavour. It feels like somewhere a group of Aradin scientists would play God with things they dare not understand, a ridiculously large complex that is run down and just bedding for a disaster to occur within its dilapidated walls, like the pixel art Blat Mesa. Most of the game is spent moving through these locations in order to find crevices that, once infected, break open containment seals to new sectors. Slithering into these crats sees you expanding and corrupting the area surrounding them, pushing your tendrils towards the locked blast door and infecting it from all corners. In any other game, this simple interaction would have been visualised as buttons or levers, fetch twist activities that result in progression to the next section. But much like the creature's movement, this act exemplifies your pervasiveness. You are not a single entity so much as a disease that permeates throughout the facility. These crevices, which reminded me a lot of the hole in Stranger Things, become save points gardling, disgusting pits filled with swirling teeth that restore you to full health and spit you out when you die. New abilities are found by absorbing biohazardous materials and grant the creature a small selection of gross new powers. Each one assists the creature in overcoming a form of blockade, allowing it to smash through wooden panels, pull through vents, or even mind control humans. in order to progress past them. Again, these powers make the creature feel more formidable and dangerous, making an already unstoppable force feel even more chaotically powerful. 
As you gain these new powers, the creature literally draws alongside them, its biomass expanding as you advance through the facility. Eventually, you'll gain additional health bars, each one granting the player new, more powerful abilities, but locking previous abilities to health bars lower on the still. This leads to some fascinating puzzle design, where the game requires you to shed away a portion of your health in order to regain access to different abilities. For instance, a power-up that allows you to shoot a web through grates in order to activate levers can only be used when the creature is small and weak, whereas a powerful shove ability is only available when the player has two full health bars. To solve it, the creature must shiver off half its mass into a pool of goop so it can pull the lever before tearing apart some scientists in order to regain its shove ability to move on to the next screen. It's truly wonderful stuff. Moving through the facility in general has a lovely flow to it. Puzzles appear often, but are simple enough to solve, and within the majority of cases, the critical path is clearly telegraphed. Harrion's biggest issue is when the correct way to do is far from clear. You see, for a game that thrives in chaos, the format of a Metroidvania often gets in Tharion's way. Rushing through this facility, leaving behind a trail of decimated bodies and bloody hallways, is incredible fun. Moving slowly back through those same corridors because you're hopelessly lost and not sure where to head next? Yeah, not, not so much. I mean... <laughs> Alright, you could argue that the pacing of any good horror movie that revolves around containing a biological horror requires moments where the humans believe the threat is under control, only for the threat to outsmart the humans by sneaking through their barricades before stooping out their juicy inside bits. But that works because we don't see the monster aimlessly bumbling around just out of frame in the meantime, scratching its head and wondering where it left its car keys. Getting lost in a Metroidvania is usually part of the fun. It's nice not to have your hand held every second of the way, and remembering the low of lot doors and blockades by starrowing through your map trying to find memorable areas is an appealing aspect of the genre. But Carrion doesn't have a map, because it wouldn't really make much contextual sense for a being made of snapping teeth and 1,000 individual eyes to have access to a tom-tom, and therefore a lot of the time you're left to your own devices, flinning yourself aimlessly through old areas and becoming more frustrated than you normally would, simply because you can feel how quickly the sense of pace has flatlined since you took a wrong turn. And so it's easy to start thinking that maybe a Metroidvania was the wrong choice, and that a different genre would have been a better fit, maybe something more similar to Hotline Miami or Ape Out, self-contained puzzle boxes for you to slaughter your way through with reckless abandon, but I just don't know if that would have worked as well. So much of what makes Carrion great is how this creature gradually increases its power over time, becoming more formidable as you progress. Ability dating within an interlocking environment helps sell the fiction of a monster trying to escape, surmounting this labyrinth literally designed to contain you, feels more cathartic the longer you spend time bashing your head against its various obstacles. Speaking of cathartic actions, killing humans is as horrible as you'd imagine. Although there's not a huge variation to be found in the actual act of ripping a scientist in two and slurping up their intestinal jam, there's still some fun to be had in your approach to doing so. You can do loud, bursting through a door before whipping your tentacles around, dragging screaming people into your various mouths, or perhaps a stealthy option is more to your tastes, hiding in vents and pulling unsuspecting soldiers to their untimely demise. Tough Tougher enemies are introduced as the game goes on, such as flamethrower-wielding soldiers and walking mechs, but combat never poses much of a challenge. Checkpoints and save areas are frequent, and 99% of encounters can be completed by simply throwing yourself directly into the fray and right-clicking until everything stops moving. I know I've mentioned this a lot, but it bears repeating. Carrion's greatest strength is how well it establishes the creature is a malevolent being of pure death. There is very little narrative to be found here. There's no introduction, and anything that comes close to telling a story is a number of small vignettes that don't explicitly say anything. The game is purely focused on telling a tale through the player's actions. There's more to establish a sense of tone and place, rather than a specific timeline of events. You never find out what you are, or where you've come from, because that's not really the point. You're the villain, after all, 
and the best villains are ones that remain unexplained. And that's why Carrion works so well. You are the creature in the vents. You are the sinister other lurking just behind the door, slithering up to an unsuspecting guard before the camera cuts to black. Your only goal is to escape, to murder everything in your path, and to leave a trail of blood and viscera in your wake. There are no bosses, no rival scientists or other creatures to taunter. You are the final boss. You are the end of the dame. In fact, the dame accomplishes a sense of danger so well that I came to fear the creature. I dreaded what would happen next, what abilities I would gather, and how effective they would be against human beings. This isn't a spoiler, but at one point towards the dame's middle portion, I noticed that I had emerged from the underground facility and had made my way up to the top of a skyscraper. When I saw the silhouettes of buildings, a city, no less, visible through one of the dame's very few windows, I let out an audible gasp. I knew what I was capable of, and the simple thought that I could be subjected to a wider population was horrifying. I found myself rooting for the humans, hoping that their attempts to stop me proved successful, all because I saw a city through a window. I've never experienced that in a video game before. I've never been terrified of my own playable character. Aesthetically, the game is wonderful. Its grimy pixel art works beautifully, and the creature itself is a body horror nightmare. Its influences are apparent. There's a lot of the thin in the way that it mutates throughout the game, but that doesn't stop it from being its own, well, thin. It's a memorable character. Maybe not for the right reasons, but it'll certainly stick with me for some time to come. The audio design is also superb. Human screams are visceral and haunting, and the sounds of the creature schlutting its way around the facility, crunching on bones and eviscerating the juice out of people, is… well, it's nauseating. Which was the intention, I'm sure. The soundtrack is also wonderful, bringing to mind the chilling stores of classic horror movies, and helps, once again, establish the dame's impeccable tone. It's fair to say that I adored Carrion. It's easily one of the most memorable games I've played all year, establishing an intoxicating tone and successfully placing you in the role of a genuine villain. I'm absolutely going to recommend you play this schlotty, disgusting body horror masterpiece, a brilliantly bloody pixel art nightmare. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this little review. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and if you could also subscribe to the channel, that would really help me out. I really appreciate it when people subscribe to this largely derelict, weird channel about indie games. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you all very soon, I'm sure. Hopefully. Don't, don't count on it. <laughs>